Oh, massive mischief! Mischief! That's actually really stuck in there. Welcome to another episode of the 604 Garage. What I'm going to do is introduce you to my solution. Enter the used B&M Ripper Shifter. I bought this from a buddy from another province for 50 bucks. So we're going to take a look at it, inspect it, see what it's missing, throw it in the car and see how much better the shifting goes. A little preliminary inspection and it looks like I'm missing two of those little adjustment or alignment spacers there. You see there's a two on the left missing two on the right so I'm gonna have to do something about that and then if you can look at the shaft here maybe I can get this into better focus somebody has done some sort of modification in here to heat that up and bend it I mean I don't think that's what it's supposed to look like from the factory so hopefully that works for me in the console that I'm using in the car which is a factory automatic console all right well let's take off that clip that holds the boot on and see what's underneath we can see we're actually missing the shifter stops so that could be an issue as well other than that everything else kind of looks to be there we'll open this up and maybe relube the uh, internals there because you can see there's four allen headed screws which allow you to uh, have access to that uh, area of the body but we've got a few things missing and we'll have to deal with those well, I decided to do a little research on the shift stops, and here's what B&M has to say about that. After extensive testing with various race teams, as well as continuing development with the original transmission engineering group, B&M Racing and Performance Products has determined that the shift stop feature is redundant on the T-Series of Borg Warner or Tremec transmissions, which is what I've got in the car right now. Because of this, B&M is phasing out the use of shift stops. If you feel that your style of driving requires the use of shift stops, install a supplied threaded stops and nuts. You need to drive your car really hard to need those. It's like they know me or something. Okay, now that we've got the shifter and the vise, let's go ahead and take off the top plate here for the, uh, the housing and we'll look inside and see what it looks like. This is a uh, 532 or four millimeter Allen key. And the cover comes off and there's two springs in here. We'll go ahead and we'll extract those springs nicely. Oh, and one thing to note, at the bottom of the spring, there's a little metal round little washer guy, which this one didn't come out, so we'll fish that one out. There we go, we got those, and then we can pull the uh, stick out. There's a little bit of a metal guide on either side, and then what we have is a plastic half circle on the bottom. This is what helps it rock. So pretty much what is inside one of these things, these little uh, metal sleeves or metal guides, they're there sort of as a sacrificial part because this is aluminum. I think this is 6061 aluminum. Um, so they're there to just help that not wear down because the, the shifter will be in here rocking back and forth. So everything in there looks pretty good. So what we'll do is we'll lube it all up, put it all back together, and then we'll look at making a couple of these guys, these little spacers here for the back. Okay, well I've grabbed one of these forward to aft location spacers off the shifter, and I think it's pretty important that I make the two that are missing. Because when you're slamming third gear in the heat of the moment, you don't want your shifter to be walking all over your transmission. So if I take my super precise 
caliper here and I mic this up, my vernier, I get a roughly just over a sixteenth of an inch thick. And what I've got here is some scrap metal, which is just around an eighth of an inch thick. So that should be just fine for what I need to do. And there it is, ready to go back in the car. We've got the 604 Garage reverse engineered spacers. These are on the left of the frame. We're gonna put this thing in the car now and see how she shifts.
Okay, now that I've swung the console out of the way, we're just going to zip a couple of these uh, sheet metal screws off that are holding this boot, and then we'll get to the shifter. Engineering on those spacers is just unbelievable. Quite impressed. There we go. Should be the last one. Let's see. Oh. Movement. Just gotta get this guy out. Bingo! And there you have it. So there's the shifter. I gotta take four Allen head screws out. The shifter can come out. You can also see where I mounted my computer in this car and all this wiring garbage is, uh, well, feeds the old amp and old stereo system that's in the back of the trunk. But this, this right here is off the trans. This is the uh, reverse lockout solenoid. Uh, reverse lighting and the VSS signal to the computer to tell you how fast you're going also uh, the VSS will help you When you're coming down to an idle it helps uh, control the IAC um, To tell your car, you know how much airflow it needs or how much Speed your car is sensing versus load and all that sort of stuff. So without a VSS You're gonna stumble and stall when you come to a light ask me how I know this I've been through this And it looks like five millimeters to pull these out And then you gotta drop one under the car. Fortunately, I can get that. And I also have more with the other shifter, so who cares? And this will come off. There's a lot of silicone there, but there it is. Shifter is out. I'll clean the silicone and I'll put another one in. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's a brass bushing in here. That's an upgrade. Um, that'll help you get more direct uh, shifter feel but yeah here's a stock here's a stock shifter flimsy piece of factory engineering i mean they work good um for you know a stock car and normal driving but who says i'm normal right okay once you clean it off i used uh, brake clean here then you got to go ahead and put some rtv on there to seal the uh, the new shifter so i'm gonna use ultra blue way too much so what I'll do is I'll go across now and I'll just clean that up just a thin layer needed really unlike what I just did okay a little bit more in the corner here seal that off it is machined aluminum onto machined aluminum, so. Okay, now that we've got a nice little seal, we can put our new shifter in there and see how that lines up. See how those spacers line up? It's just a little wiggle. Yeah, oh, it's thicker flange. There we go. There we go. Four bolts. Okay. 
Oh, there you go. Front hole lines up. Second front hole lines up. Back hole lines up. And another back hole lines up. Well, I think we might have done okay. Run these down real, real, real gently. Don't want to over torque this. And then I'll get a ratchet and over and torque that up. There we go. We'll just get a little, little snug, a little crisscross action. Okay, and then we'll go back and we'll just, now that they're all seated, we'll give it a little calibrated wrist. Perfect. And one more. Okay, well there it is, it's in. Ooh. Feels a lot better so far. I like it. And the rest of this is just the install of the boot and the console and buttoning everything up. So that's just the reverse of what you already saw. So I'm not gonna bore you with that. I'll just finish that and we'll keep moving on. here well that's the end of this episode unfortunately I can't go for a drive and take you guys with me because it snowed the other day and the streets are really wet and well I don't really have a death wish so I don't want to go you know power shifting through three four gears in the rain with this thing because uh, it's pretty lively in the back end so anyhow as soon as it dries out we'll take you guys for a ride we'll uh, we'll go and uh, you know grab third gear real hard here and, and see exactly how this shifter works but I can tell you from right now sitting here in the garage it's like butter. So you guys take care and remember, keep the shiny side up.